Growing up in the city during the mid-1960s proved to be quite challenging, especially for my brother JJ. Her father always said, someday your life is going to flash right before your eyes and you better make sure it's something worth watching. He knew that there had to be more than just working at a gas station to look forward to. In the last 100 years, waves of newcomers to Alaska have challenged the land. The first newcomers to challenge the land would be pioneers and mountain men, seeking riches from the land in the form of furs, timber, and gold. It was a land of opportunity. The country was shrinking, and there was a fortune to be made up north for any man with drive and ambition. If your dream was big enough, and you had the guts to follow it, there was truly a fortune to be made. With the nation in the throes of the serious depression, my brother JJ struck off northward to the vast unknown reaches of Alaska, bound to discover the mother load of all gold finds. There was a driving curiosity, and it represented a new kind of country for him to see.
His journey started at the Alaska coast, taking him over the mountains, down a chain of lakes and rivers until reaching the forks of the mighty Susitna and Talkeetna rivers. 200 miles in 30 days, JJ reached a mountain range dominated by a 20,000 foot mountain the native people called Denelli, meaning the Great One. There was no doubt he had reached his destination. This was to be the gateway to his dreams of striking it rich. Here, my brother JJ decided to settle down and build an enormous cabin, married his childhood sweetheart, and soon had four sons. Over time, JJ's wife, feeling unfit to endure the wild land, defeated by the vast reaches of space and time, left JJ and headed back to New York, taking two of their four sons, leaving him alone to care for the two youngest, Jeffrey and Joshua. opened up Big Alaska, punching into the uncharted virgin wilderness once thought to be impossible. It opened up vast sections of land to homesteaders, free for the pickings. It was the beginning and the end of imagination all at the same time. My brother took this all in stride, feeling it gave him even bigger opportunities of reaching further into the unknown wilderness. provided a stable form of transportation along this primitive section of wilderness, rumored to be rich in both furs and gold. My brother staked out several prime locations near the small frontier town of Telkitna, which he considered his home base. It's a place where he was well known and respected. Talkeetna sits on the banks of three major river systems, providing both rail service and riverboat access. It happened on his annual supply run to town, just before spring breakup. He had a winter's worth of furs to be sold and a supply list a mile long. Things like flour, salt, sugar, peanut butter, gunpowder, and of course, all the grub a person's gonna need to tide him over until the next season. His dog sled was loaded, a bit heavier than he would have liked. Nonetheless, his dogs were on fire, ready to go. What appeared to be a grand day for travel 
soon developed into one of the worst blizzards in Alaskan history. And little did he know, he was on a head-on collision course with it. As he gained elevation, the wind and snow picked up. The wind was howling, the snow was blinding. Visibility was so bad he couldn't even see his lead dogs. Soon, the mountain pass he was in was impassable, but he kept pushing on. He drove himself and his team of dogs into the unknown, which would eventually lead him to his own demise. And just like that, he was gone. Within hours of JJ's disappearance, there was an emergency rescue call. Emergency search and rescue teams from three territories immediately set off to find my brother. They set up a base camp in the mountains he had last traveled. Okay, great. Thanks for putting it together. We'll be expecting them. Yeah, and that's a pretty dramatic shot. So I, I want to get the pilots dialed in to their spacing. Desperately searching both by air and by dog teams, they had come up empty. After several weeks of searching, they reluctantly called off the search. My brother had come to this wild land, wanting to claim it for himself, but it was the land, the sheer size and extremes that ended up claiming him. News of the recovery of that summer was immediately felt by the three sons in New York. John, the oldest, was in shock and just wasn't able to handle the news. Joseph was in college when the news of his father came, hitting him particularly hard. For him, leaving New York wasn't a possibility one he would have to live with. He was devastated. Joshua, who had come back from Alaska some years earlier, left for Alaska immediately to deal with his father's will and other issues involved with his death. He also was looking forward to seeing his youngest brother, who he had always been so close to.
Thank you. Which way to town? I'll just take the trail up there, head north. And I'll take you right to it. Thank you. go to get some sleep around here. You need a room? Yeah. Okay, you want the roadhouse just down the street. Oh, well, thank you. So, is it true this gold here? <laughs> How long did it take you to dig this up? All day yesterday and the better part of this morning. Oh, amazing. So how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Where are you from? In New York. New York? Yeah. New York City? The one and only. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Never thought I'd come here. Pretty boy. What's your problem? Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Now we're just having some fun with the punk. Yeah? Why don't you have a little fun with me? Good afternoon. The lady at the Fairview said you might be able to help me. I need a room. How very kind of her. I do rent rooms upstairs at the end of the hall. $50 a night if you're not permanent. Oh, I'm not permanent. I'm only going to be here about a day or two. Parlor's yours to use. Mind your volume. I do have other renters. They're staying downstairs. Right. Two railroad workers and a school teacher. Coffee's always on. Mind yourself on the stairs. Stairs are older than I am. I'm just as creaky. Your room's this way, but this is the bathroom right through here. Oh, I thought that's what that was. I trust you know how it all works. I am fairly certain. And here's the room. Watch your head. I do not have time for a lawsuit. Well, this is very nice. Um, if you don't mind, I'll take my meals in here. One more thing. Uh, what time does the train leave tomorrow? You'll want to be at the depot at 11. It leaves at 11.20. Heads north. Thank you very much. You don't want to miss that train. You better get moving. Thank you. After a night at the roadhouse, my nephew Joshua struck off with plans of catching the train north to his father's cabin. One of the last cabins he remembered before returning to New York 
some years before his father's death. Hey, are you Joshua? We got a telegram. My brother's youngest son, Jeffrey, aware of Joshua's return, okay. sent him a telegram to meet him at the forks of the two rivers just outside of town. I think I see him going down the alley right now. Let's go follow him and see what he's doing. There he goes. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. But he's gonna meet with his brother. Yeah. yeah. You think he saw us? No. I don't know what's going on. City slicker didn't see shit. Punk might have got the best of us in the bar yesterday, but next time we won't be drunk, and then we'll see what happens. We'll be all over that boy. Look at that smug son of a bitch over there. <laughs> no. We're just gonna have a little nap by the river. Yeah. Well, he may never wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Where's his brother? I don't know. He'll be here soon enough. They'll get theirs. Come down from New York City, little fancy city boy. <laughs> I've had my eye on their land up there for a while. Yeah, no kidding, man. I think there's actually gold on theirs, opposed to our weak ass claims. Finding a spot on the bank of the river, Joshua soon dozed off with thoughts of his early childhood running through his head. He remembered his little brother, Jeff, as a rambunctious kid, helping feed the sled dogs with their dad. Following his dad's footsteps, becoming an accomplished dog musher himself, just like his dad. also carried on the traditional ways of log building, as well as becoming a great fisherman. They were obviously brothers from the same blood. That was a given.
Joshua. Joshua, it's me. Hey, it's me, your brother. Joshua, <laughs> get up. <laughs> Man, it's been a long time. It's been too long. <laughs> look at you. Oh, you look, trim, you look huh? great. You Thank look great you. Too. Thank you. Let's get after this, huh? Let's do it, man. <laughs> oh. Nice to see you. Oh. You know, those are J.J. Johnson's kids, right? Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's his brother over there, Betty. Uh, they read his will. They're gonna be on that land, and I had my eye on that, you know. Yeah, I don't need no company up in our neck of the woods. Can't run. It's gonna get awful crowded up there real soon. Yeah, tell me about it. I think we may, uh, have to take care of this problem. Well, I think we could think of a thing or two. Solve our little issue here with the Johnson boys. That's right. They read that will, they're gonna have to get some ideas. Well, you got an idea or two. Got one or two myself. Uh huh. It's fishing and boat capsized. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Say, you ever see those guys before? No. I don't care for that type much. Yeah. I can't believe your first night here, you already got yourself in a mess of trouble with them guys. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, well, you know, it just seems to follow me, you know. You know those two guys I pointed out to you? Yep. That was them. Oh, that riffraff there. It, yeah. I told yeah, we, you. Yeah, we I were, um, you. We were, I was at the Fairview and they just tripped this kid. Yeah. Just walk uh, around and just let that go. See, that's that's the problem I have with this, this community with that riffraff. It seemed to be collecting a little more. Yeah, it's, but it's good to have some good, honest new guys coming into town and show some honest goodness around here. <laughs> right. You have my back, though, right? I got you. Good. I got you, bud. <laughs> uh, Just like old times. Yep, you know it. Here. Hey, pal. How you doing? I made it. You did. Nice to see you. Just in time for dinner, too. Oh, I see. thank God, I'm starving. <laughs> now, as you see, we got some bear meat here. <laughs> bear I know, meat? I know you don't like seeing them, but oh my God! Did you shoot this bear yourself? I did. I had to. I didn't. I didn't really want to. It was, it was more of a need than a want. Yeah, there was not a way that I was gonna let this bear get into it. He's been giving me a pr problem the last couple of years, so mm. his time was due. <laughs> well, you know, Dad was a heck of a guy, huh? Yeah, yep. You guys are a lot alike. Really? A lot alike. <laughs> Quite a few years ago, we had a, a bear that broke into camp here and started getting into our cache, and same thing. We cooked up the bear shanks sitting over fire. And I tell you what, it just reminds, just you being here with me right now is just so much similar to dad Aww. being here that even though that you don't, you didn't get along with him and, and, and you guys didn't see eye to eye all the time, you know, the genetics really pulled through and, and you guys are so parallel together. It's just, it's just incredible. You know, the genetics really did pull through. Well, maybe that's why I mean, him never really saw eye to eye, you know? Maybe. Maybe you guys are too similar. <laughs> yeah, the old hardhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we love the guy. Yeah. God, God rest his soul. All right, I'm gonna get some more wood here. All right.
Ah, lovely. How's that bear coming? Uh, the bear? Uh, it could use a little bit longer. A little bit longer. I still can't believe that, you know, people eat bear. Oh, man. Oh, that's... You've been in the city too long. Wel yeah. Welcome home. You know, it has been years since I've sat around an outdoor fire. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you know, in the city, you know. Yeah, what do you do? Well, yeah, everyone's just in a hole in the wall in some building, and everyone has the same heat. Mm. You know, it, it's a, heat is a button yeah. on the wall you push, you know, and it's convenient, but yeah. it's soulless, you know. You, there's no freedom to it. So are the salmon running yet? Uh, not for a couple weeks, um, but when they come in, they're going to come in pretty heavy and I can really use your help if you're gonna be around. You're gonna come in force, huh? Force. <laughs> Just like these mosquitoes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I yeah. bet you didn't miss these being in not, the city. Not at all. How's that? Is that enough for you? Uh, I think that'll do for right now. Yeah, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but sure. I'm kind of glad that he's not around to hear me admit that he was right about Sheila. Sheila. That was the last argument me and him had. Yeah. The whole reason I moved to New York. Biggest mistake in my life. Uh, whatever happened to Sheila? She ran off with some guy named Mo. Little runt. Yeah. What I wouldn't give to go back and fix things with Dad, you know? Yeah. That, that last argument we had just, ugh. And I'll never get to tell him I'm sorry. Yeah. Some of my greatest memories of me and him were fishing. Oh, no. Absolutely. I just, you know, I don't, I haven't had a lot of time to do that, a lot of opportunity, you know, living in New York City. You know, oh, yeah. You don't uh, get to do that a whole lot. You don't get a chance. You don't get a chance to swap mosquitoes, walk in a river, catch a salmon. <laughs> I've missed it. But tell me about those two other guys oh. at the bar the other night. Oh, well, you know, I run into people like that all the time in New York. You know, people there don't believe in manners anymore. And you know, I was getting sick of it. I was actually kind of glad to come to Alaska to kind of get away from that, and then that's like the first thing I run into. Yeah, come to think about it, I do remember seeing those guys up the tracks quite a while ago, but the worst part about that is that that's where our claim is, and that's where we're gonna be going. And there, there might be a chance that we're gonna run into those guys again. Ah. Uh. Well, so that'd be very unfortunate for them. So while you're here, I know you've taken care of business with them, but now I would assume that they're going to be getting really mad and greedy. And if they're going up that way, they're going up there that way for one reason and one reason only, and that's no good. Because <laughs> that's where Dad's claim is. That's where we're going to be going. And Well, I, I wouldn't worry about them too much. I'm glad that you came around, brother, to knock those guys around a little bit and show them who's boss in town here. <laughs> How do they get up there? There's actually a flag stop train that heads up north about 60 miles where people can, can wave and they can get dropped off or they can get picked up along the railroad tracks. Is that the way we're going? Uh, yep. Well, I'm really glad I made it here. Just in time. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, I'm going to get going. I've got to get home, take care of my chores, dog chores. Yeah. Um, but there's upstairs in the in the cache. Dad's got a a bed upstairs there. So a bed, really? That's your spot. He put, he put a bed in the cache. That's his little hideout. <laughs> <laughs> you thought of everything. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, oh boy. But anyway, buddy, um, I'll catch up with you in the morning. Huh? Sleep well. All right. Man. You have a good night. Yeah. I'll try. Bear, huh? Not as bad as I thought it'd be. Ugh. <sighs>
I'm gonna sleep like the dead tonight. Johnson boys. I knew your dad. I grew up with your dad as a kid. Your dad and I climbed McKinley together. We hunted together, we fished together, we took many adventures together. There's so much about him that I don't really know. I never really knew him. He was a hell of a man. He was a heck of a guy. We're gonna miss him. Diana, do you uh, have uh, Johnson's file by chance? Yes, I do. Here it is, sir. Great, right, thank you. Thank you. You know, your, your dad was quite the adventurer. Uh, we climbed McKinley together back in the day. We've been on a lot of different rafting trips. You know, your dad owns a lot of gold claims in the state of Alaska. I mean, a ton. I had heard that, yeah. Um, I've, I haven't been there, but my brother Jeff has. Sure. You know, looking at uh, the provisions of your, uh, your dad's will, I say you're in for uh, quite a ride. Uh, what your dad has done is, uh, with all of these gold claims he has, he's basically set up uh, a maze for you to go through location to location with clues to find your way along this journey. Whoever gets through this maze, essentially, will find the gold at the end of the rainbow. It also goes on to say, if this treasure is not found, claimed, and recorded within one month time period, it then becomes open, fair game, to any such person who dare takes on the challenge. <laughs> That sounds like something dad would do. Also sounds like a lot of fun. Maps to the gold mines. I don't even know how to read this gibberish. This was your dad's doing. Your dad set this up this way. He wants you and your brothers to work on the clues and to find the treasure. It's up to you guys. Maybe Jeff can read it. Got something else for you here, Joshua. Your dad, back in the day, took down this rogue grizzly with a single shot from his Smith & Wesson 44. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I hate bears, and he knew that. And he leaves me this. Hmm. Your dad was a hell of a man. Hmm. It's the hospital. Hello? Yes? Yes, he is. Yes, hold on one moment. Is he all right? I'll be right there. My brother isn't here because he got the crap beat out of him last night. He's in the hospital. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Nope, I've gotta go. Well, listen, before you leave, your father has a good friend by the name of Alex. He's a native Alaskan, and he can help you on this journey. You can probably find Alex at one of your dad's old cabins. Probably the best one to check first would be his old cabin at the confluence of Talkeetna, the Chilitna, and the Susitna River. Hey, thank you very much. Good luck to you. Yes, I gotta go.
Anybody home? Hey. Hey. Oh. Are you Alex? Yes. Were you friends with J.J. Johnson? Yes. Who are you? I'm his son, Joshua. I've been looking for you. Heard you were here. Well, you found me. Joshua, I miss your dad a lot. That's where I live. Nice duck. Yeah. That's what I caught with my hunting bow today. You got that today? Yes. From the river. Your dad believed life is to be lived. Hmm. Is that bread? Yeah, that's klipak. Was it? Klipak. This is what we survive with bread, grouse, and ducks. You and my dad, you guys made it out here, right? Yes. Yeah. You knew him best. You were his best friend, right? Yes. He, him and I hunt together, survive together, then and the last I heard he was dead. At my father's will reading, he gave me a map that led to all his claims. I know all those places. In two days, I can take you there. Be ready. I'm glad because I can't read them. They're like Greek to me. <laughs> Your father read them. Keep your eyes open, Alex. There may be some bad guys looking for you. If they get a hold of you, they're gonna hurt you like they did my brother Jeff. As long as I'm with you, you're okay, all right? Yeah. But when you're away from me, be on your guard. This scum will stop at nothing. They're gonna try and get to my father's claims before I do. I wouldn't be surprised if they're following me now. So, just be careful. I will. The first part of the journey for Joshua and Alex was to follow the Hatcher Pass Trail, which led them 33 miles from Tidewater up to the 4,000-foot Hatcher Pass and the headwaters of the Talkeetna River.
So where are we on the maps here? You're right there. You're around here. We're here? Go panning, yeah. Okay, and that's this way? Yes. All right, well, let's go. After 16 miles, they had reached the ultimate test, a steep 1,000 foot climb up to the summit of Hatcher Pass. Desperate to reach the gold fields, they pressed their luck through rain, fog, and snow. Two weeks had passed, and they had little of any luck gold panning, trying to find any kind of color from the creek beds. Most would have turned back along the way, but they continued on, bound to find his father's treasure.
It's gonna really storm here, isn't it? This. Those are rain clouds. How do you tell the difference between rain and snow clouds? Because they're gray. See. What a piece of shit. So the bear's got like this. My dad lived in this thing? What? Well, what kind of clue am I supposed to find here? Who must be that a bear got to eat all this shit and we're not gonna get it? This place looks like it's been destroyed for like a year or so. And the valley is pretty. Yeah, it is pretty. This was a nice cabin before the bears got into it. Why'd you guys come here? What was this cabin's purpose? Wolves and wolverines. You hunt you hunted wolves? Yes. Trapping. Trapping them? Yes. I think I got. I think I got what my dad's trying to tell me here. You wanted to live here, in this little house? Oh, yes. You've been here many times? Yes, with their father. He built his cabin for gold mining. For gold mining? Yes, there's a gold back there. 
You and him are gold mining here? Yeah. His claims up there? Well, that's it. No wonder he wanted to live here. It was near his gold claims. Yeah. The treasure he spoke of. It's in the past. It's there for you. <laughs> We're just about there. This is an independent mine. Your dad used to live there. There? Yeah. So, bunker house. But for the miners? Yes. Did my father work here? Yes. He was a uh, independent worker. Independence worker. Yes.
Alex! Come where are you, man? We're burning daylight. I told him to be careful. You okay, man? Are you alright? We got him. Hey, hello there. I'm looking for a way to get up river. Uh, you're gonna need a power boat, jet boat, something. Where can a person get one? Well, this guy up here will rent you one. Sounds good. This is a ticket for what you'll need. This guy can hook you up. Howdy, Sim Smith. Joshua Johnson. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a way to get to my dad's cabin up river. Well, I can take you up there. How far you gotta go? About. 20 miles. Well, rate for something like that would be 150 bucks for a drop off and a pickup. I can do that. Great. When do you need to go? Oh, I'd recognize the landing. What do you got up here? That's just Mad Dog's place. He's got a store. You can get your provisions there if you need. Yeah, I'm probably going to need to stock up on some stuff if I'm going to go to my dad's cabin. So why don't we just go on up there? Need some bacon, five pounds of beef jerky, some coffee, yeah. and when we get there, there won't be any reason to go inside. We can just talk to him through the door. So you were at the Fairview the other night. Yeah, you're that guy from New York, right? I, I remember you're the guy that whipped on those young river rats there. That was me. What are you up to now? Well, I got this map in my dad's will. It's supposed to lead to his um, gold, and I have 30 days from the time I get this to get it. Otherwise, it becomes public, you know? I've been here, I've been there, and I've been there, but I haven't found this place yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'm familiar with these areas here. This one's a little tougher to get to. Uh, you got a couple choices. You can take a riverboat, but I guess there isn't a lot of those guys around right now. So I'd take the train. And you jump on the train and run north and get off here, right in this area here, next to the tracks. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of stuff around the area. It's definitely worth taking a look at. Might be good to find someone to help get you to where you want to go. I had Alex. Well, what happened to Alex? He was taken care of. Oh. Yeah. Could it have been them river rats, you think? Yeah, that's what I think. Well, it makes sense, because they're they've been raised in hell all over the these parts here for the last couple of years, off and on. I wish somebody would just take care of them. You know, that'd probably be the thing to do, but you know how that goes. I'm starting to come around to that way of thinking myself. Yep, I reckon. Here, why don't you take this with you? Because you need to be prepared for them, because I know they're looking for you. Yeah, well. I'm ready for them.
I think I'm starting to get it, Dad. Probably don't have long. No, no. Uh, doors open is probably around. Alright, let's see. Oh! There's a bag. Nice. Alright. I think that's like everything he owns. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's nice. With him all the time. I'll show him. Alright. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll uh I'll look out back, see if he's got any anything out there. Alright, cool, cool. Check it out in here. And ends. Okay. Um, well, we probably got another minute or so. Um, All right. Whoa! Uh, what was that? Pay dirt. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Sweet. All, All right. right. Here. I'll go stow this with the rest. All right, good. Got his bag. No, you and your rat bastard friend have done nothing but cause me trouble since I got here. Some misunderstanding. You sent my brother to the hospital. I find you in my father's cabin, stealing my I don't know whose place this is. Thank you. 
Dad, now I know why you gave this to me. It's a good thing we found this raft to get back to town. We'd have been walking for days. Yeah, poor bastard, just leaving it out for anybody. Yeah. Time to go cash in some of this gold. Maybe we can finally get some cash for this. <laughs> that was a damn waste of time. I know it. Ted filled us in on that clause in old man Johnson's will. Yeah, we caught a break there. Three days expires, right? Mm-hmm. If any of them Johnson boys are still alive in 30 days, they're gonna wish they weren't. We ought to hurry up in any case. I don't much like the idea of sharing that claim. Well, if anybody else shows up, we'll just take care of them the same way. Hey, hey, isn't that one of the Johnson boys right there? No way you followed us up this far. Hey, we left some canoes. Yeah, they did. He's going by land. Why don't we just cut across? Okay. Beat yeah. him over. Well, let's find the paddles. You gotta be around here somewhere, right? Yeah. Bitch. What? Yeah. Smarter than the guy with the raft, at least. Can't always be lucky. Right. Well, um, let's see. Probably best if we head off, just head off that way and loop back around. He'll probably follow the trail that way. We'll just bushwhack through here. We'll still stay ahead of him. All right, set him off. Yep.
That Jeff never even saw us coming, did he? <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> that Alex kid, he was even easier to take care of. <laughs> Tell me about it. This guy, though, there's something, something different about him. The New Yorker? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got this tendency to make my life a little more complicated than I tend to prefer. Yeah, well, we'll take care of him. Mm -hmm. He's a little different, though. There's no way you followed us up this far. <laughs> Tell you, you with that two by four. <laughs> yeah, he's not so tough with lumber upside his head. Yeah, we caught him off guard at the cabin. Yeah. Tell you what, if he's still following us, he's probably out there in the woods holding his map upside down. <laughs> Shit, we got his bag. He ain't got the crap. <laughs> we got his map now. <laughs> I almost feel bad for that poor son of a bitch. Not me. He got what was coming to him. If he comes back, he's gonna get some more. Damn right. The bears don't find him first. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you say we head down to the river, set up camp for the night? <clears throat> there ain't no way he's gonna follow us all the way down there. No, it seems safe enough. All right. Getting tired of breaking bush. No kidding. Much better at breaking necks.
get the hell out of here. Sure hope Ted gets here soon. That weather's coming in. Yeah. All right, um, here, you go grab the rest of it. I need to get something out of this one. All right, back in a second. You ain't going anywhere. That's what you think. Bullshit. Oh! Hey, brother! Watch out! Brother, <laughs> you had my back. Always. Wow. How Always. long have you been following me? I've been following you ever since over the path. Really? Yep. Granite Pass up that way. I saw you up from top. I didn't mess around, bro. I no. Hell. Guess you didn't. And you were right. Hey, pal. <laughs> Come have a seat. What are you doing? This was Alex's favorite spot. He would um, sit here for hours just looking at the lake. This bench was built for him, in fact. His bench. Mm hmm. He wanted his ashes scattered here, so... I wanted to come back here one more time, just to say goodbye before I had to go. Yeah. Believe me, I really don't want to. Yeah, it's gonna be sad to see you go. Yeah. It's been exciting. Well, you know, there is something that our father was trying to teach me throughout this whole ordeal. That treasure he spoke of? Oh, yeah. It wasn't money. It wasn't money, huh? It wasn't gold. It was being alive. That's what he understood. And, and when I think about how I used to exist in New York, you know, that wasn't living. That was subsisting. And this, well, there's no comparison. There's a richness here, a value. Yeah, being to, alive. To the very breath in your lungs. And, and that's something he understood, and that's something that our brothers need to know. That's why I have to go back. I have to go get them. Yeah, it's too bad that you couldn't stick around a little bit longer. Yeah. Believe me, the last thing in the world I want to do now is leave, but I just have to go back and clear some things up, and you know, John and Joseph, they need to come up here. Yeah, it'd be nice to see our other brothers <laughs> get back home. There's something that our father taught me that this whole thing that I now need to make sure they know. So I'll be back. We'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs>
the Johnson boys together again. Together again. <laughs> <laughs> Watching each other's backs, just like old times, huh? Just like old times. Hey, how are you doing after that beating? I'm doing fine. You doing okay? Yeah. Your leg's still bothering you? A little bit. I'm not doing too bad. I'm getting better. It did bother me a little bit, but what really makes me feel better is the hurt that we put on those two old boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's good medicine right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a crazy few months, huh? Mm -hmm. You know? Fun packed. Oh, it's it's been a blast. I don't know. It might be kind of scary next time you come up. No, I don't think so. We had this much fun when this time. <laughs> I, I'm ready for it, you yeah. know? We'll get, it. We'll get all my... of us together this time. We'll be good. Yeah.
see from the smoke? Did, did you see that or not? At what at what point? Though? When you're shooting Eric and me, is there smoke kind of like a, a, a haze here? I don't know. Remember. Right now, you mean? Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know right away. Look so at each good. other. Look at each other? Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Come here off. <laughs> Where have you been all my life? <laughs> you eat McDonald's today? Because I'm loving it. You know, if I could rearrange the alphabet, I put you and I together. <laughs> I never heard that one. You never? Really? Oh. Oh, man. That is the classic one. <laughs> that is good. I heard that McDonald's went on a bus down in Juneau.